Hey guys, Derek Chuck is here from Team Miniature Aircraft USA. And today I'd like to bring you a quick tip on how to change the torque tube gears in your Whiplash helicopter. Now if you're like me, every few weeks, whether one of your friends goads you into flying too low, or something else happens, a dumb thumb or something, and you wind up crashing and stripping your torque tube gears. So today I just thought I'd show you some tips and tricks that I use in order to make changing my front torque tube gears or your rear torque tube gears a little easier. So before we get into that, we'll just go quickly through the parts you're going to need. Now, I'm going to do the front torque tube gears in this instance, so I need my front transmission case with both bearings installed, uh, both on the top and bottom and uh, back here for the gear. We're going to need our jack shaft. We're also going to need our two shims, the 0273 shim for the bottom gear as well as the larger one for the spur gear. And of course we're also going to need our spur gear itself. There's the one I just took off this a little while ago. As well as our shaft side torque tube gear and our torque tube side torque tube gear. Now in addition to these parts here we're also going to need a couple tools to help us out here. So I use this dental pick. This thing's actually pretty handy for a lot of stuff, so I always keep one of these around. Uh, we have a file. Uh, I'll show you what that's for in a little bit. Uh, well, obviously a one and a half millimeter driver. I like the Metthorpe ones. They work pretty good. A Sharpie marker. I will show you what that is for in a little bit as well. And of course some Loctite. I like the 243 because it's oil tolerant. So, without further ado, let's get into how to change your torque tube gears. Okay guys, so to get started here, uh, the first thing I'd like to show you is a quick tip on disassembling the uh, transmission case before we get into the reassembly part. Uh, as you can see here, I've already taken this assembly apart. Uh, it's pretty straightforward getting this whole assembly apart. The only thing I really want to point out in this segment is to push the jack shaft out uh, down this way. Uh, the reason for that is if you push it out this way, I've seen sometimes where if some of the Loctite managed to wick its way down past the set screw and onto the shaft between the shaft and the sleeve, it can be a little bit difficult to get the sleeve to separate from the shaft. Uh, also, sometimes when you thread the set screw in, if it doesn't go in perfect, it can create a little bit of a burr and this will also make it a little bit tough sometimes to get the uh, metal sleeve to break loose. So the way to solve that is to push it out this way and that way you will be keeping the sleeve pressed against the bearing here and it can't come out of the gear. So just one thing to keep in mind while I'm taking this apart. Uh, on to our next segment. Okay guys, a few more things I want to go over before we get into the reassembly of the front transmission case. Uh, a lot of times I see people just take a bunch of Loctite and slobber it all over these set screws when they go to install the uh, spur gear and the bevel gear onto the jack shaft. And the problem with this is that when you go to thread the set screw into the gear, you wind up um, threading lightly through the plastic and all the Loctite winds up in the plastic portion of the gear instead of the metal. So by the time the set screw gets into the metal sleeve, there's no Loctite left on it. And you basically have nothing holding the set screw in place. So what I usually recommend doing is I take my pick here and put a little bit of Loctite on the tip of it and then I go ahead and apply that to the middle of the metal sleeve threads inside here on both sides. And this way I'm not slobbering Loctite all over the inside of the gear here which will uh, actually wind up bonding the metal sleeve to the jack shaft making this difficult to remove later. And I'm also ensuring that I do indeed get Loctite into the metal portion of the gear. Um, you can also, when you go to reassemble this, put a little, little bit on the very tip of the set screw just to give you maybe a little bit extra in there, but again, I don't slobber it on there and I try to put most of it in through here. The other thing we want to look at quickly here oops, is to look at the jack shaft itself. Um, because of the way the set screws are engaging these holes here, sometimes you can get uh, either some Loctite on here or sometimes if the set screws uh, dig into the jack shaft just right it can cause a little burr here on any of these holes so what I like to do is take a file 
and feel those burrs out and then just lightly file them away. Uh, this way when you go to slide your jack shaft through your, the gears it slides nice and freely like that. Uh, I already cleaned this one up so you can see it's sliding nice and freely but if it wasn't you're going to want to check each of these holes and make sure you clean them up. So without further ado we'll get into the reassembly process now. Okay guys, we're going to begin the reassembly process here. So the first thing you want to do is just check and make sure that your bearings here are fully seated in the front transmission case, uh, especially this one. You want to make sure this one's flush with the surface here or it will affect your gear mesh. Uh, once we've done that, you can go ahead and pop in your gear like so. Make sure it's fully seated and it spins nice and freely. Uh, once we've got that installed, we then want to take a look at our two shims. Uh, there's a thick and a thin one. The thicker one will go behind the spur gear on this side, and the thinner one will go behind the bevel gear on this side. Uh, I definitely don't want to mix those up. So check those out before you install them. Um, the last thing I want to note here is that the sh jack shaft has two different hole sizes here. One's more of a uh, slot than a hole. And that slot in allows you to adjust the uh, up and down slot here a little bit to make sure that you have a nice tight uh, up and down movement here and you can really minimize that. So when you go to install it, the slotted end should go on the spur gear side and the whole side will just go with the bevel gear. Um, anyway, I'm going to hop off camera here and assemble the case loosely without the set screws in and we're going to move on to our next segment. Okay guys, so I've got my spur gear and bevel gear installed in the front transmission case with the jack shafts and the two shims, and I'm getting ready to install my set screws here. Uh, so some important things to remember as you install the set screws here is you want to make sure that you line up the hole in the jack shaft with the hole in the bevel gear. Uh, this way the dog point of the set screw will engage that uh, hole on the jack shaft and your gear won't slip on the shaft. So once you get the first one lined up here, you can go ahead and thread in your set screw. Uh, once again, you might want to put a little, little bit of Loctite on the very edge in addition to the stuff you put into the sleeve itself. Uh, and then you want to just try and feel for when the dog point engages into that, uh, that step on the jack shaft. Uh, once you feel that, what I usually do is take a Sharpie and mark the very bottom of my driver here so that I know what position the driver's in when the set screw is fully seated. That way when I go to install my second set screw on this side I can tell and make sure that it engages the uh, hole on the jack shaft for the set screw. Because sometimes it can feel like it bottoms out and uh, it's not in there all the way. So this way I have a visual check of making sure that my set screw is all the way installed onto the jack shaft. Um, and I guess one final other closing comment as you wrap up your install here is to make sure when you tighten the set screws for the spur gear and the bevel gear here you want to tighten both sides evenly so that the uh, gear doesn't get cocked on the one side of the shaft. Um, that's very important so I usually tighten each one a little bit evenly and again I don't go gorilla on it when I tighten it I hold it by three fingers and uh, I just tighten it a little past bottom uh, again, you don't want to go fistful onto these set screws, you will just strip them out. Um, and one more thing to look at is to make sure that when you do tighten both ends, you don't have any up and down slop on the jack shaft. Uh, this should be slop free. Uh, you can do that by pushing the spur gear up uh, against the bearing here a little lightly while you tighten the set screws down. Uh, and again, make sure that you line up the set screw with a slot in the jack shaft. Uh, one final tip, I suppose, when you're installing your boom onto the uh, back of the transmission case here, make sure that when the torque tube goes into this uh, gear here that you don't push the gear out of the bearings. Uh, it can get pushed out just a little, little bit and that will cause some binding in your drivetrain. So as you put the torque tube in, just uh, push back on this after you get it installed and make sure that it's still fully seated. Uh, other than that, that concludes my tips video on installing the torque tube gears in the whiplash. Uh, most of these also apply to the tail shaft assembly except it's actually a little easier if you don't have a spur gear there. 
but if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me, and uh, thank you for watching.